because in Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and the personal choices they make. And even if we wouldn't make those same choices for ourselves, we've got a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz formally accepts the Democratic Party's nomination for vice president as Kamala Harris prepares to address the convention tonight. And former President Donald Trump appears behind bulletproof glass in his first outdoor rally since the assassination attempt on his life. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world. This is the Morning Rundown. Today is Thursday, August 22nd. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. This is the final day of the Democratic National Convention, where Vice President Kamala Harris is set to accept the Democratic Party's nomination for president. Last night, it was her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, accepting the nod for vice president. In Chicago, Walls delivered the evening's keynote speech on Wednesday, introducing himself to the American people with what he described as a pep talk, similar to what he used to give during his time as a high school teacher and football coach. It's the fourth quarter. We're down a field goal, but we're on offense and we've got the ball. We're driving down the field. And boy, do we have the right team. There'll be time to sleep when you're dead. We're going to leave it on the field. Before Walls took the stage, it was some of the biggest A-listers and veteran party leaders giving speeches to rally up the base. Former President Bill Clinton and Oprah Winfrey were among those who also spoke, giving their full support to the ticket. Tonight, Harris will close out the convention. The theme for tonight is for our future. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump will be visiting the border in Arizona today, and his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, will be campaigning in Georgia. Former President Donald Trump held his first outdoor rally since the assassination attempt on his life last month in Pennsylvania. This time, a new layer of security, a wall of bulletproof glass surrounded the podium as Trump and his vice presidential candidate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, addressed the crowd in the battleground state of North Carolina, the focus being on national security. On the same day as Trump's North Carolina rally, lawmakers continued their search into what went so wrong on July 13th. The bipartisan congressional task force met remotely with the FBI to discuss progress in the agency's investigation into the assassination attempt. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is expected to suspend his campaign by the end of the week. Kennedy is expected to give a speech Friday on his path forward in the 2024 election during an event in Arizona. This comes just days after his running mate said Kennedy has two options left, stay in the race or drop out and back former President Donald Trump. It's speculated Kennedy will announce his endorsement of Trump during the same speech on Friday, possibly in a joint appearance with the former president, who will also be campaigning in Arizona that day. Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, has confirmed there's been a lot of communication back and forth between the campaigns, but nothing is set in stone yet. Divers have now recovered five bodies in the wreckage of the luxury yacht sunk off the coast of Italy during a storm on Monday. Their identities have not yet been confirmed. One person remains missing. Fifteen people were rescued in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. Crews are using the help of underwater drones in their search efforts at the wreckage site. Now to the latest developments in the war in Gaza. The second U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln, has now arrived in the Middle East, joining the USS Theodore Roosevelt. The U.S. military central command sharing video of F-35 jets taking off from the Lincoln's deck. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordering the Lincoln as well as the guided missile submarine, the USS Georgia, to the region earlier this month as tensions remain high over an expected attack by Iran on Israel following the killings of top Hezbollah and Hamas leaders. The Lincoln and Georgia add to the U.S. ships already in the area, including eight destroyers.
These military moves come as President Joe Biden stressed on a phone call with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Wednesday. The urgent need to conclude talks on a ceasefire and hostage release plan. The White House saying the president pointed to the upcoming discussions in Cairo as crucial. Finally this morning, Taylor Swift has broken her silence following the foiled terrorist plot that resulted in the cancellation of her tour in Vienna, Austria earlier this month. Taken to Instagram on Wednesday to reflect on the end of the European leg of her tour, Swift posted several images from her concerts, along with a caption which read in part, Having our Vienna shows canceled was devastating. The reason for the cancellations filled me with a new sense of fear and a tremendous amount of guilt because so many people had planned on coming to those shows. But I was also so grateful to the authorities because thanks to them, we were grieving concerts and not lives. Swift went on to say, let me be very clear, I am not going to speak about something publicly if I think doing so might provoke those who would want to harm the fans who come to my shows. In cases like this one, silence is actually showing restraint and waiting to express yourself at a time when it's right to. My priority was finishing our European tour safely, and it is with great relief that I can say we did that. Swift added she was heartened by the love and unity she saw in her fans who banded together. These are your top stories for this Thursday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day. Thank you.